The topic of my talk is Siri profiling citizens in a welfare state. I'm Ronald Huysen. I represent the platform for civil rights protection in Holland. Um, I uh, work together with a group of NGOs um, who sued the Dutch state because of an algorithmic uh, profiling system. It was being used on Dutch citizens in the, in the social security sector. Um, first, I give a short introduction of Siri. Uh, then I will go into our problems with Siri while we suit the state. Uh, then I will shortly go into the changing uh, public debate on Siri. After that, I will give you the most important points of our court ruling and speak a little about the, the positive developments that uh, are a consequence of this court case. Uh, about me, I am a journalist and researcher. I work together with, together with uh, NGOs on privacy uh, and uh, civil rights. I focus on digital technology in the social domain as opposed to um, uh, police, uh, uh, police, uh, police, uh, police digital uh, technology and uh, more in the social domain of people getting help from the government being uh, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, receiving social benefits. And, uh, first to introduce Siri, I want to show you a YouTube video, an animation video we made to introduce the topic. Als burger deelt u allerlei persoonlijke informatie met de overheid. Wanneer u belastingaangifte doet, een rollator nodig heeft, een parkeervergunning aanvraagt of een hond neemt. U geeft deze informatie in goed vertrouwen en verwacht niet dat die tegen u kan worden gebruikt. Maar sinds kort gebeurt dat wel. De overheid kan uw informatie koppelen met allerlei andere bronnen en aan de hand van een risicomodel voorspellen of er met u misschien iets aan de hand is. Voor onze overheid bent u bij voorbaat verdacht. Zo is er sinds 2014 het systeem risico-indicatie, oftewel Siri. Dat systeem wordt gebruikt om burgers te scannen op fraude-risico's. Dat gebeurt zonder dat u het weet en zonder uw toestemming. Als u volgens Siri genoeg lijkt op het gebruikte risicomodel, komt er automatisch een vlaggetje bij uw naam. U heeft misschien nog niets verkeerds gedaan, maar overheidsinstanties houden u dan wel scherper in de gaten. U weet dat niet. U krijgt dat niet vanzelf te horen. Maar hoe bepaalt Siri eigenlijk of u een risico bent? Ook dat is geheim. Bent u al verdacht? Kijk op www.bijvoorbaatverdacht.nl Well... Uh, let's first talk about Siri's um, goals. Siri, which means uh, System Risk Indication, is a risk profiling system that the Dutch government implemented in 2014. Uh, it aims to produce so-called risk notifications on citizens. Uh, according to Siri's data analysis, these citizens have a heightened risk of not complying with a very broad collection of laws in the domain of social security. Um, and citizens uh, who are flagged by Siri end up in a so-called risk uh, register, a registry of risk notifications for two years, which government authorities can uh, can access to uh, to use the risk notifications to further uh, investigate someone. Um, the goal of Siri, according to the law, is quite a mouthful. It's the prevention and combating of unlawful use of public funds and provisions in the field of social security and income related schemes, the prevention and combating of tax and premium fraud and non-compliance with labor laws. Uh, if I try to explain this to my uh, mother-in-law, I tell her it scans every citizen for every penny they receive from the government or any penny that the government uh, wants to expect to receive from you. Um, so what Sources does uh, Siri use to assess citizens? Uh, it's 17 open formulated categories, uh, which are all summed up here. Um, notice that these categories are described quite broadly and vaguely. So uh, each of these categories can contain uh, dozens or even hundreds of, of uh, types of personal data. And the highest, the highest advisory council of the Dutch government advised against the implementation of Siri and said that this list is so broad that it is hard to imagine a type of personal data that is not covered uh, in it. So where does Siri get these, this data? Uh, from the five big public authorities which 
basically make up the, the welfare state in Holland, the, the tax service, the unemployment service, the social security bank, the labor inspection, uh, the immigration service, and uh, the local municipality. Uh, it works uh, by means of de-siloing government databases. So um, uh, these databases are filled with uh, all types of personal data that, that, that citizens uh, provided for a very specific purpose, uh, a verification whether they uh, they they have the right to a certain social benefit or a or a tax cut, um, but all this all of these data are centralized and combined for a new very broad purpose, which is risk indication. Uh, um, how does Siri make use of uh, this data? Um, we are very curious about that. Uh, what, what, what combinations does Siri make? What defines someone as a risk? Uh, what logic does, does, does Siri use to assess people? Um, so we filed a uh, freedom of information law request uh, and the answer to that proved to be very disappointing. Almost any question you have on Siri is, is, uh, uh, was declared confidential by the Ministry of Social Affairs. Uh, um, the, it, according to them, uh, it, it, it plays what, what was mentioned earlier too. Uh, it, it plays into the ha into the cards of anticipating fraudsters. So, uh, if people would know what Siri is looking for, they would game would be able to game the system. Uh, uh, so, anything has been declared classified. Um, Let's see. The, well, however, we did uh, find out a, a few things about uh, how Siri functions and how it is uh, deployed. It, it functions as, a, as, a, as we call it a neighborhood troll net, um, referring to the large amount of data that is collected and uh, the people that are analyzed. It analyzes any citizen in one or more uh, postal codes that are next to each other. Uh, and every single neighborhood Siri was used uh, was relatively poor uh, with lots of inhabitants that are dependent on the social services uh, which Siri scans for um, and also have a very large amount of uh, people who come from a migrant background um, which is also one of the problems we have with Siri uh, which I will go into now we sued the Dutch state in March 2018 uh, with a very broad coalition of several NGOs and two Dutch writers. Uh, our first goal was, well, to delete uh, Siri from law, never uh, to return again. And we also wanted to change the discourse on this topic uh, to, to, um, to mobilize the public opinion on instruments like Siri. Uh, our main problems with Siri... Um, can be divided into two main topics. Uh, Siri is a carte blanche in a black box. The carte blanche part being the government is free to roam through these 17 categories as just, I just summed up. Uh, and basically all, your, all, all the data you ever gave to the government is fair game to use for this new, very vague and broad purpose. Um, and the black box part being there is no transparency whatsoever being given about how you are assessed, uh, what data is used exactly, what combinations are made. And this, in our view, creates a uh, paradox of transparency where, where the government should be as open as possible to citizens and citizens uh, should have a right to a private life. Uh, this is completely turned around in, in Syria, uh, the government being completely in intransparent and uh, the citizens being forced to openness about almost every aspect of their personal lives uh, considering the 17 categories that Siri is free to browse through and this uh, in our view is a recipe for distrust which our co-claimant and uh, author Maxime Februari uh, formulated as follows if you're no longer assessed on the basis of violating a known norm, but based on secret risk profiles, the fear of repercussions is present in every context with the government. I think that sums up pretty well our, our, our main problem with Siri. It, it creates a, a climate of distrust, which shouldn't exist in a, in a democratic state of law. Um, well, 
in 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 well since since the since we announced our uh, uh, our court case we saw the the public debate on Siri and and instruments like Siri uh, shifts um, how did this happen well first of all and most importantly uh, it appears that the citizens you analyze with Siri are not too keen on this uh, so Siri was used in two districts in Rotterdam. Uh, in Rotterdam South, the, the, the poor part uh, of Rotterdam. Um, and when the labor union uh, part of our coalition spread the word about Syria into, in these two districts and organized a public event to inform citizens that appeared that it was considered very controversial by the inhabitants. They, were, uh, they felt they were treated like criminals uh, with the city specifically picking their neighborhood to scan uh, and a short interview from the Dutch Daily Trouw uh, is very telling, in my opinion. Uh, he interviewed uh, an, an attendee on the, in the, in, on the information event we organized. Deeply offended is Majub Bukyu. The Rotterdammer has been living in the Netherlands for almost half a century, 50 years in which he worked hard as a carpenter at Blijdorp Zoo, as the father for his three children. They all have a job, he says proudly. And now this. With a swing and arm, he points to the apartment blocks in his Hillesluis neighborhood. They live there, the criminals. I am one too. Apparently, I've worked for nothing all those years. I think this is pretty telling how, uh, on how you feel when, when, when the government has decided to pick your neighborhood to, to turn everybody inside out, looking for reasons to investigate citizens. Uh, other developments in the in the shifting public debate on Syria is that uh, a week after the the, the protests in uh, in Rotterdam arose, uh, Major Abdalab uh, announced that he would stop the the Syria investigation because of a conflict with the ministry about using even police and medical data, the only two types of data that weren't yet in the scope of Syria. Uh, the ministry wanted to use these these data too in the in the Siri investigation and the, the Rotterdam city uh, the, the mayor of Rotterdam couldn't agree with that. Uh, in the same week, the Volkskrant revealed that Siri hasn't caught a single fraudster since its adoption. There were very uh, very many different reasons for that, but the main reason was were technical and capacity problems, but also a lack of added value. So. Uh, I can get into that after the presentation, but uh, it, uh, in my view, it really showed that Siri really has no extra value on top of already existing, uh, less far-reaching instruments the government already has. Uh, and last but not least, a week before the, the court session was held, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme uh, Poverty and Human Rights condemned Siri in a letter to court, calling it a digital equivalent of inspectors knocking on every door in a, in a, in a district. Uh, let's see, where am I? Then I want to go <clears throat> to the verdict that was, uh, that came on February 5th, two months ago. Uh, it was a big win for our coalition. Uh, the serial legislation was declared non-binding, which is the most rigorous way for, uh, for a court to, 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 uh, to deem something uh, 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 Ill uh, illegitimate. Uh, we had a victory on the most uh, important and, uh, and fundamental points uh, uh, um, that, that, that exist in, the, in privacy and data protection laws. Uh, things like transparency, which the, the court called the leading principle of, of data and privacy protection, uh, verifiability, data minimization. So we won on, there was, we were, we were we had a bit fear that 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 the the verdict would present a a repair option, so that a few cosmetic changes could be brought to Siri and uh, and the government could just go on using it. But that's not an option anymore. The the verdict is very very fundamental, and uh, it really leaves no room for a system that's that's as far reaching and uh, intransparent as Siri. So we are quite happy about that. Um, the, the most important boy, points of victory being uh, insufficiently transparent and verifiable. Uh, therefore, citizens cannot defend themselves against the data analysis carried out. Um, and it's based on fundamentals of privacy and data law protection, uh, data protection law. 
um, and one of the biggest wins in our view is that the 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 gov the, 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 the Hague Court confirmed that instruments like Siri can have a chilling effect on the willingness to share information. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is, was one of our main problems with Siri, that it creates a, a, a climate of distrust between the state and its citizens. Um, I won't wanna, don't want to tire you with long citations from the verdict, but I am now, because this is one of the best uh, uh, fragments of the, of, the, of the verdict. It's... Uh, a, citizens should be able to defend themselves against the fact that the risk report has, has been submitted about him or her. But also, if no risk notification is being uh, submitted about a citizen, they still have the right to know how they are being analyzed, what data is being used. They must be able to track their personal data. This really uh, makes it impossible for a, Siri like, a system like Siri ever to uh, be built again. <clears throat> Other positive developments are that several public authorities and governments already are looking at their own data, uh, in-house data analysis instruments to assess them uh, based on the, the Siri verdict. So the, uh, the UEV is the, the largest, uh, is, is the unemployment agency in Holland. Uh, it's a very big public authority and it's uh, uh, on their own initiative, they are checking their own uh, instruments. Uh, that's also and there are also several laws uh, being on hold. Uh, one, at least one big data matching law is being put on hold because of this verdict. It, it just, uh, it's just, it's too far reaching uh, looking at this verdict. So that's also a good thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, at the same time, we have the biggest scandal uh, in the de Dutch tech service since ever uh, with, with, uh, with hundreds and maybe thousands of people forced to, to pay back tens of thousands of uh, euros without any sufficient uh, uh, um, uh, legitimation from the tech service. So they, they can't even prove that they were fraudsters. Uh, and the, the people that are being... <clears throat> Being uh, being treated as fraudsters still don't know why they are being treated as fraudsters by the by the Dutch tax service. So it is a very uh, bad thing to happen to the people, but it did create a perfect storm for the Siri verdict because it is clear to everyone now that that data analysis can have a very 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 big impact on people's lives and it can actually destroy people's lives as we have seen in Holland. So um, the Siri court case provides very valuable lessons and a strong legal precedent for uh, current and future data analysis practices. Uh, but still, we need to actively push these lessons because not all governments and public authorities will uh, take their own responsibility. So that's the thing we need to keep an eye on in the future. Uh, that was it. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. I hope uh, it's been clear and it's been interesting.